Today we have a Eurosonic ES200. It's the same customer who sent the Manicestrol in, so we'll be able to get his job complete and back to him, hopefully. What part is determined to come onto my... some microchip? An LA3301. sure why that's here so we're going to see how it's performing before we do anything to it I can't remember what voltage these are I may have to look that up he says 12 volts he's got dummy batteries in there Okay, and at the moment it's drawing 7.5 milliamps. And without the LED, it's drawing 5.5 milliamps. So to plug it into the test equipment, we're going to need some kind of adapter. I think it's BNC by the looks of it. It is. Right, so once a day we'll get his, is this his letter? Yes. ES200. Now I've already put, just put the test set on, so we're going to, when we look at the frequency, we'll take that with a pinch of salt because the thing needs to be on for half an hour uh, before we can take a meaningful reading. Okay, so right now it looks like we're on low power. It's actually doing two and a half watts. And that seems reasonable to me. Let's look at the deviation. Wallow. Wallow. You know, spot on. That's absolutely spot on. Frequency, see if it's anywhere near. So at the moment it's 2779073. Now, that's not out of spec, but it might be the test set's not warmed up enough yet. So we'll come back to that in half an hour. So we'll do other things. Receiver. So we need to set the receive signal generator to 2779. 073 for it to be a fair reading so I'll do that right now okay so it's set the signal generator accordingly turn the volume up whichever that is and these take an external speaker so we can plug the test gear in And we'll switch this. Oh, I've got picture in picture, and I'll put that on. Look, I've put it on. So we need to twiddle the attenuator until we get 12 dB. That's about 12 dB, and it's doing 1.25. Microvolts for 12 dB synod. Just in case that if I find an instruction book copy, we'll just see what it is for 12. It's 0.9 for 10 dB. Right. So I've been taking those readings. We'll turn it off. And we'll take it apart. So 
So I've got to remember to that he's got two dummy batteries in here because you're going to be using these with either eight throwaway batteries or ten rechargeables. I think we did two or three of these last year. I seem to recall one wasn't doable because of ingress of moisture. When these came out in the late 80s, one of the first sets to for CB with fiberglass printed circuit, which certainly impressed us when I was at Nottingham Radio in those days. Although we didn't do CB radio, we did always help people who, you know, were local and wanted it. You know, we didn't advertise that's what we did, but we would always help, and that's how was I've continued doing. Not many two-way radio dealers who seem to be happy to do CB radios. Some snootiness. I don't like snootiness. Right. I'm probably going to have to find the service notes on this because I wouldn't have the foggiest way to start. And uh, that's probably where we're going to Discon no, I won't disconnect the speaker because it still leaves the microphone, doesn't it? So we've got a transmit line up that, there by the looks of it. And, and um, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be transmit down there. And this is going to be receive. And I remember the detector wasn't where I expected. So I'll pause the video and see if I can find some info. Right, so that's our notes from before. But now I've put onto a photo I've just done, um, like we've been doing recently. Uh, shall we have it that way on? I think we'll have it that way on. Right, power back on. Of course, you've got to remember these things start up on channel 9, which is annoying. There we go. So going to transmit, and I'm going to go down these three, and there, see what we get. So picture in picture on camera 1. Low power again, is it that one? Yeah, so we're on the two and a half watt scale. Transmit, we're at 1.06 amps at the moment. So it's warmed up and it's doing 2.8 watts. So it probably just, I would guess it does 3 watts when the radio is cold. Deviation is spot on. I'll just double check that. Wallo, just give it a fraction. Wall. I'll do it with the thing. I can't. Uh, I can't do a wallow at the same time. Let's 
see where that is. Wallow. Wallow. One, two. Wallow. Wallow. One, two. Wallow. Wallow. That seems to be right. Listen to it on our other set. Testing one, two. I've got that on the other band, haven't I? Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. One, two, one, two. So, uh, transmit, see what about the frequency now. No, it's still off frequency. We'll have to do that. So, the next thing is how do we do this? Do we have to take this subboard out? If you have forgotten. No, we can just get to it. It's just down there. So we'll go to the frequency. Oh, we're on the frequency counter. We'll go to the frequency counter and just see whether we can trim that. So we'll have it, it's a bit too high that. Whoa, it's pretty good. So that will make a difference. It was that far out for it to make a difference. Right, let's go over to receive. So now we'll adjust the signal generator. So it's 27.79125. And we'll go through this. So the front end are these four. We need to just drop this signal. I can't see it gaining much here. And now over to the detector. So we'll put the oscilloscope on. Turn the bench light off so we can actually see it.
How strange, it's miles out. I'm, I'm not going to know to what this one does. Hmm. Strange. Let's go back to the cyanide meter. About there. I'm going to have to. I think that's the detector actually. Let's go back to an S9 signal. To be out there with it. Right, let's see what we've got with the cyanide reading now. Well, we have got an improvement. We've got 0 0.95 microvolts for 12 dB cyanide. And for 10 dB cyanide, We've got 0 0.75. So that has improved, which is nice. Now, Squelch is likely to be wishy-washy. It's a handheld. So, let's see what full Squelch is. Let's go over to the attenuator controls. Full Squelch. Here goes. We're at 1 microvolt. I want it, I'd like it to be 100 microvolts, but it never will be. 3 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts. 100, actually, it will. Now I want it to come in before then, it's coming in at 3 millivolts, so we need to adjust this so that it comes in. Drop it off. Now it needs to be further off than that. needs to be further off than that. Way well, that's how I want it. 100 microvolts is off at 30. Turn the squelch down. Let's see how sensitive it is at the other end. Which is signal generator to stand by. Set the squelch to threshold. Signal generator back on. And let's see when it comes in. The answer is coming in at 1 microvolt, it's leaving at 0 0.95. So that should be alright. So that's it. So out of interest, what's the current consumption now? So it's doing about 2.8 watts still. Uh, it's 1.02 amps, so that's not moved. Um, in fact, the power consumption has gone down slightly, which means the thing's in better tune. It was 1.06 when we started at 2.5 watts. It's now 1.02 for um, 2.8 watts. And I so say when this is cold, this is going to be a bit more. So, um, what is it, what else is there to tell you? No, I think that's it. I think we're done. Out of interest, low power.
is 350 milliwatts. What's that? Channel 9? Oh, tone high and low. Okay. That can affect the sign ad. So I'll tell you what, we'll just go back on to receive. We've got 12 dB. I'll just put the uh, sign ad meter back on. So at the moment we've got 12 dB for the 0.95 microvolts. Let's press the tone button. I can't hear any difference. Oh well. <laughs> right, okay. And out of interest, when does the battery low light come on? Can I alter this? No, I can't alter it easily on this power supply. So we won't play that game. Right, we'll switch picture and picture off. And we'll put the screws back in. We'll add that to the folder. Short, 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 long, long. Let's unplug the that. It's just one final thing I'm going to do, and we'll just check it's still on frequency in an acceptable manner. I think the test set's been on 40 minutes now. I remember these were very popular at the time because they're much cheaper than the realistics. Um, I think these were eighty nine ninety nine, and they were much less fragile than the Harvard four tens, the Alba CBH two, and the Harrier CBH two. Uh, the plastics used on those are best described as fragile, and this takes a bit more of a knock uh, and with that rugged fiberglass printed circuit board it was a better proposition altogether now we don't test these things on batteries at the end of the day we are a trade organization not a retail one so um, Power. One final adjustment. I'll just tell you, twenty-seven seven nine one one nine. So that's fine. So we'll swap the aerial from the test equipment to the one on the roof. And I've said many times this is an Antron ninety-nine type of aerial, not necessarily a, a, a genuine one. Maybe a copy. It doesn't have the optional ground plane kit. This is a single story building and it's mounted just above gutter level. So it doesn't even poke out much. I don't think it even pokes out over the roof. So it's deliberately mounted like that because that's how ordinary people do ordinary ales. We don't do anything elitist here and everything we do is ordinary. So you can always, there's always room for improvement 
and what we demonstrate. But I've had 35 miles on this aerial, but not in the scratchy corner direction, of course, which is why we do scratchy corner where we do. So it's Monday, and it's about 10, 10 to 5. One Anna Roger. One Nana Roger. I can't hear any difference to that. Maybe it doesn't even work. Right, so there we have it. The Eurosonic ES200 CB from about 1989-1991 uh, era. And we'll be doing an on-the-air test with that on here. Not a field test. We've done the field test on these before. And thank you for watching. <laughs>